Welcome to the Urlana Nation pregame show as we get set for Illinois and number five Michigan tonight at State Farm Center. Illinois coming off back to back disappointing losses. It's the first time they've lost two games in a row this season and they had it all but one at number three Maryland on Saturday, but not able to get the job done. They don't score for the final five minutes and five seconds in that game and take home a loss. It would have been a signature win for Brad Underwood in his time here in Champaign. Now he has another opportunity in back to back games to pick up his first win over a top five program for Illinois since that 2013 season when they took down number one Indiana. Anchoring our coverage from State Farm Center tonight is Marley Weirda and Derek Piper as we say hello to them for the first time. And our opening word here tonight as we get set for tip off at 8 o'clock. That's right, Brad. We are here at the State Farm Center getting ready for Illinois to take on the Michigan Wolverines. And what a way for them to start out Big Ten play. They had number three Maryland last week. Now they get number five Michigan at home. We're expecting a good one tonight, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. You hope it is, at least if you're the home team. So uh, another opportunity for a, a big time win. Obviously not getting the easy ones to start off play, but uh, never too early to talk about wins that could matter in March. And definitely with number five Michigan come to town, this could be one of them. Absolutely, and definitely a second chance for the Illini, who has had two back-to-back -back kind of heartbreaking losses. Both games, they lost by two points or less. So definitely the Illini are hoping to get back on track and kind of get over this hump a little bit, Brett. All right, we'll see what they can do tonight against a very tough Michigan team. The Wolverines own wins over North Carolina and Gonzaga this season. So they are certainly a force to be reckoned with. But Illinois, all eyes on them and maybe carrying over that physicality from that Maryland game to tonight. Defensive effort was certainly a lot better than it was against Miami a couple of weeks ago. The Illini held the Terps to just 33% from the field. And that defensive intensity is something that Illinois is certainly going to have to bring tonight, especially from the outset after the Hurricanes of Miami blitzed Illinois at the start of the game. They weren't in it. Illinois had to make a big comeback against Maryland. That wasn't the case at all. Illinois came out and was ready to play at the start. That carried out some big dividends into the second half. Illinois played really well and led the majority of the game. They only trailed for 27 seconds in the whole game but not able to get the win as Illinois is still trying to figure out how it's going to close, how its players are going to close a game. Who's going to take the last shot? And that's a big question that some Illini fans are still asking themselves coming into a game like tonight where Illinois is favored. We haven't said that a lot this season against high major programs. Illinois, the favorite, especially a top five program. But that's where the odds makers and Ken Palm have Illinois tonight coming into this one. A one point favorite over the Wolverines. I think a lot of people expect it to be close at the end. Can they win a game at the end is still yet to be seen. Illinois has not won a high major opponent this season and the team talked yesterday about how they're just trying to build upon Maryland's game. This team, you know, we're moving along. Uh, I thought we did unbelievable that game. Um, we're really happy where we at. Uh, we, we're not going to let that loss affect us. The physicality what we had the other night in Maryland, that's what we need to come out with. We're definitely pushing us over the edge. Um, we're a really good team. Um, we have really good players. And if we, we just come together like we did in that Maryland game, I think it could be a really great team. It's the first time since I've been here I felt like that that was I was coaching one of my teams. Everything that we did in the Maryland game can be carried over. Uh, the scouting report is different, but the attention to detail, the the, the toughness. Um, I mean, we we played like a physically tough team. We'll see if that can continue tonight. And we are on Facebook Live as well, so jump in on the conversation as Derek and Marley can answer all your questions. I'll chime in as well. And so, guys, how do they carry this over, or can they? Because I thought they came out really well on Saturday against the Terps. Yeah, Brett, and I think that's kind of why they might be favored to the to win this one, just because they did play uh, an outstanding game against Maryland, but kind of let it go in the last couple minutes there. So that's kind of what they want to do. They want to carry over. I mean, we heard what they said in the press conference this week. They want to carry over that physical intensity and just the defense that they had, uh, and they'll definitely need it against Michigan tonight. I think they're ranked top in the Big Ten for field goal percentage. So what did you see? You were at the game in Maryland. What did you maybe see? from that game that they can kind of bring here to the State Farm Center tonight? Just their intensity. They were the aggressor at the defensive end. They did a fantastic job of shutting Maryland down on the driving lanes, the contested shots at the rim. Of course, against Michigan, a better three-point shooting team. They're going to have to make sure they get out and contest those threes. But overall, DeMonte Williams, 
inserted into the starting lineup. I thought that made for a good defensive lineup early on. They were locked in and uh, really made their play start at the defensive end. I think it got them into their offense after that. And I know we saw um, kind of a little spark from Kipper Nichols. Uh, Brad Underwood talked about him a little bit and how he was kind of, you know, taking charge on the defensive side of things, you know, when Kofi wasn't able to. What did you see from him, and do you think he'll get some minutes tonight? Yeah, they're going to need him. He, he was locked in. That was as good as Kipper as we've seen all season. Of course, the question always with Kipper is, can he show up the next game? But uh, when he's able to play with that kind of effort and intensity, he's a physical dude. He can guard and obviously made a couple of shots as well. So that's going to be a valuable thing if he can come off the bench and give you some good minutes, which you're hoping to get tonight. Yeah, and I think that consistency is maybe something that they've been lacking so far this season. I mean, that's nothing new for the Illini. They'll kind of play lights out one game, and then, you know, I mean, we saw in the first game of the season they went overtime uh, with uh, Nichols State. So just I feel like the Illini maybe need a little bit more consistency, and I think somebody that's probably been bringing that a little bit has been uh, Trent Frazier. Uh, they talked a little bit about him and his leadership and maybe what he's been able to do. Do you see him playing on a consistent consistent uh, kind of level and what is he bringing to the Illini? Oh, absolutely. Trent's been great all season long. We just want to see him maybe a little bit more aggressive later in games. The last two games hasn't taken a shot in the last 10 minutes. Look at his percentages. He's shooting 43% from three. He, he's doing an outstanding job at the defensive end. Thought he did really well against Anthony Cowan. Another big time matchup against Xavier Simpson tonight. But Trent is making the right play tonight. I think he's matured as a playmaker. But just knowing that he's a bucket getter late in games, you want to see him step up a little bit more. Yeah, and the late game scenario is is something that the Illini have certainly been preparing for. It was kind of the case that they've had for the last two games, so they want to be ready for that situation again tonight. And that late game situation has really been a point of emphasis. A lot of fans complaining about that lack of execution, and rightfully so, because when you go back to back games, you don't get a shot off in the final seconds and you turn the ball over or have an offensive foul. It's not a good look for Illinois, especially in year three for Brad Underwood. And here is that on Saturday as Andres Feliz turned it over and then fouled Anthony Cowan. He made one of two free throws, missed the second one intentionally, and that was the ball game. Illinois not able to get a shot off in the final few seconds. But the players said they're just looking at the positives coming off of this and trying to further execute when it comes down to the stretch and when it matters most. Uh, we've actually added a couple of things. Uh, we've got to be able to get, uh, uh, you know, Trent options and looks. Uh, Kofi's made, I think, 16 out of his last 17 free throws, so we're a little more comfortable now making him a viable option at the rim. Uh, so we've, um, we've we've spent some good amount of time on that in the last couple of days. Uh, Coach did a great job with that, you know, just getting guys, you know, ready for that. Uh, you know, we practiced different scenarios, different situations, down three, you know, uh, up three. Uh, I mean, entire game, uh, but I thought we did a great job with that, you know, just executing and uh, just, you know, timing and being in the right positions and just making the right read. It's interesting to me that you hired Brad Underwood at Illinois because he was the X's and O's guys. The recruiting was the big question, and he comes in, and really the X's and O's on the court have been the question. The recruiting has gone pretty well, and so, guys, what do you do differently if it gets in a situation tonight? I think Kofi needs to probably be on the floor, number one. At least that's my take in that. And who gets the ball in that? They mentioned Trent a little bit. Do you mix it up and go Trent? Because Io had it in the Miami game. Andres had it last game at Maryland. Who gets the ball tonight? Yeah, Brett, I think um, there's a lot of different pieces that could go into this. I mean, I think there are a lot of viable options. I feel maybe they might switch it up a little bit. I feel like Trent has kind of been the guy. He was the guy a little bit last year, so people kind of maybe expect him to go for that buzzer beater, you know, three-point shot. So, you know, maybe they'll go for Andres. If Kofi's on the floor, maybe they'll go for him. But I do think there are, are a lot of options, and it could kind of depend on, you know, just the Michigan scouting report and who they feel might be you know, the best person uh, to take that shot. But who would be, you know, your guy to do it? Yeah, I'd like to see Trent get more looks. I think especially off the ball, just trying to create an open three for Trent Frazier. But as you mentioned, a lot of options. It's good to have those. I think you can want to read the defense and understand we have different guys to go to. Maybe it's Io on a drive or Trent on a three or Kofi rolling down the lane for to the rim. And as Brett said, we'd like to see Kofi there in the late game. Uh, that was a maybe a concern uh, in that Maryland game where, 
lot of success happened when he was rolling to the rim. So uh, I think that someone has to step up. This team is still searching for who they are as an offense late in the game. They tried Georgie. They tried Andres. They tried Io. Someone has to be able to make a play late in that game, and Anthony Cowan did, and no one in Illinois was able to do so. Now, do you think that's more of an issue? Do you think they're just lacking a little bit of a, a veteran presence? Do you think they're lacking leadership? Why has maybe there been no one able to, to step up? It's a good question. We thought Iowa was a closer last year, and really was. He had game-winning shots against Michigan State, Ohio State. Hasn't been able to do so later on in, in games this season. So uh, I think it is about someone stepping up. And also, this team needs to be more prepared, have, have go-to plays or go-to sets uh, to where they know what they're going to do late in games. I think that, that lacked against Miami. Miami and Maryland. They spent a lot of time on that the last couple of days. And I think if we're expecting a close game, which a lot of people are for tonight, you got to show up and uh, be able to execute late. Yeah, now Kofi Coburn, arguably one of uh, the best players on the team and certainly a guy that should be there during some of these uh, critical situations, but he hasn't been. He's been in a little bit of uh, foul trouble. We'll get to that a little bit later. But do you think if he was in the game in these situations against Maryland, against Miami, how would have the outcome may have been different? I think against Maryland, you know, Brad talks about trying to draw a foul, and Kofi has done a really good job at that. And you saw that they used the ball screen to bring up Georgie and try to create an angle for a guard. But I would like to see that be Kofi because when he's rolling down the lane, if you switch the ball screen, all of a sudden a guard is on Kofi. That's a mismatch, or even just dump it inside to him or throw it up top. Uh, he can jump over a lot of people and also draw contact. So he's finished really well around the rim. And I think he impacts things at both ends of the floor because he rebounds really well and obviously a big time scoring threat inside. Yeah, and the Illini will certainly need him to stay out of foul trouble tonight so he can be available during those late game situations, Brett. And Kofi talked about that coming out of that Maryland game yesterday, just saying, look, he, he understands he wants to be on the court. And, and you could tell that yesterday he wished he would have been on the court at Maryland on Saturday. He was not afforded that opportunity as Brad Underwood kept him on the bench with four fouls. He only had uh, six minutes of playing time in that second half against the Terps. I think we'll see a little bit more of that in a late game situation, even with four fouls. At some point, you just got to roll the dice and keep your best player in the game because that's what Kofi Coburn has been for Illinois this season. A little bit of a surprise, maybe, but the freshman has certainly risen to all expectations that he has had come his way. He has been a dominant force down low, a double-double machine, and he says he is starting to mature both on and off the court, figuring out his role on this team and what he needs to be for this team to be successful. You know, Kofi's first time it's really happened where he's had to sit a lengthy period because of because of foul trouble, and we need Kofi on the floor, and there's no question. Yeah, I'm a really physical player, so I just got to realize what's legal and what's not. So sometimes I make a play which I think to myself is not is legal, but it turns out not to be. So I just have to lock in and focus on film, watch more film, listen to what my coaches tell me, and go out and be better. Overall, I think Kofi has been really good this season, and. He's been pretty limble on his feet. He has done a good job of staying out of foul trouble overall. I think for a freshman big guy, when you compare him to what we saw Jeremiah Tillman do at Missouri his first year and those typical big guys, I think he's done pretty well. What do you guys think? Yeah, Brett, I don't think uh, he's lacking any of uh, kind of that body control that we may see with new freshmen coming in. Sometimes they're a little awkward, especially when they're that size. But how do you feel like Kofi maybe uh, is just looking as a does he Is he playing like a freshman, essentially? No, he's not. I mean, he's played as composed and as confident as anybody on the roster. He's been very consistent in his play, his production. Had a great first half against Maryland, nine points and seven rebounds at the half. Uh, that was really the first game, as Brett mentioned that foul trouble was a was a big issue and I, I think that some of them were ticky tack fouls it'll be interesting how certain games are called and, and again a, a matchup with John Teske tonight Teske seven foot one 265 so uh, a lot of uh, body mass colliding with each other so uh, but Kofi overall has exceeded expectations as a scorer as a rebounder and as his condition he's dropped 15 pounds since he's been here in Champaign yeah, and I think when you you ask him, you'll you'll say, you know, Kofi, are you you know expecting this kind of success that you've seen kind of to start your freshman year? And he'll be like, oh yeah, I I expect it. I'm I'm seven feet tall, so um, I not I guess certainly not the most humble guy. But uh, he was talking a little bit about you know getting into foul trouble a little bit, and you know just some of them maybe that he he thought was legal or other things that were legal. Do you think maybe that's just something that he's gonna develop with time and just gain a little bit more maturity and a 
awareness of maybe what might be considered a foul or not? I think so. I think overall, a lot of people were wondering what was a foul and what wasn't in some moments with Kofi and Georgie. But uh, we saw it with Georgie last year. Had to learn how physical he could be and what was going to be called in the Big Ten. Uh, and Kofi's going through that as well. He's a big human being. He's going to unfortunately get called for some things just because he is strong and able to, to move some people, just not without a lot of with, not with a ton of effort doing that so uh, overall I mean he's still learning it's, he's 10 games into his season and uh, I think he'll be just fine yeah and definitely a great start for him but uh, we know he's good we know he's big uh, we know he can shoot the basketball we know he can rebound but what's something that he's kind of missing to maybe push him over the edge a little bit and just for him to be just not a good basketball player but a great one yeah, I think part of the next step is being able to hit the mid-range jumper and extend outside of the paint as an offensive threat. And then overall, just being more consistent guarding ball screens when he gets switched on the guards or be able to, to come outside of the paint and be able to move his feet and everything. But I think he's done pretty well at challenging shots. He can still do a little bit better and maybe extend his range as a shot blocker. But overall, I think scoring-wise, on, on the block, he does have some room to grow with his toolbox as far as his moves and everything. But when he gets the ball inside, I mean, he's, he's going to score most times. And definitely a big matchup for Kofi Coburn tonight. Like you mentioned, John Teske coming to the State Farm Center tonight, as well as the rest of the Wolverines. Brett. Yeah, that John Teske matchup with Kofi is one I'm going to be looking at, as well as Xavier Simpson, who does it all for the Wolverines. He is their go-to motor guy and really the guy that facilitates everything for him. If there's a couple guys you're going to want to watch tonight, it's Xavier Simpson and John Teske as well. Isaiah Livers, another name, and Derek and Morley can break all that down. But the Alana, I know they're going to have their hands full, which is so many weapons that Michigan brings. Really good player, um, really good five men that can run the floor and shoot shoot the ball really well. Um, I just got to do stick to my assignment, do what my coach tells me to do, and we should be all right. He's a problem. Uh, he's been that for everybody that they've played, and um, you know the problem the problem is he's made all of those guys very very. <laughs> Talking about John Teske there and the problem that he has is Brad Underwood throws his coat. Maybe he'll be doing that tonight if the refs aren't better. There were some questionable calls, as you mentioned, Derek, on Saturday in College Park. I thought there was a lot of calls that went Illinois' way, too, and that Illini fans probably aren't too hesitant to, to complain about on that. But as we head back out to you guys, what do you make of this matchup and some potential problems that Illinois might face tonight? All starts with Teske and Simpson, right? Yeah, I guess we'll break it down a little bit. Obviously, they're kind of the two go-to weapons for the Wolverines. So uh, I guess we'll start with John Teske. What does he uh, maybe bring, and what kind of a threat is he going to pose to the Illini tonight? He's got a lot of size. He's obviously able to contest shots around the rim, but offensively, he's going to present a challenge for Kobe because he can score at all three levels. He's not shy about taking the pick-and-pop three. He can make mid-range jumpers as well and score with his back to the basket. So Kobe's going to have to be able to account for him, whether he's going to roll or he's going to pop and also try to stay in front if Xavier Simpson's coming down the lane and uh, he's got to step on Trent Frazier or Io DeSumo and, and, and so forth. But uh, Teske's a veteran. He can rebound it. He can score it. He can block shots. He came in here last year. I think he had 13 points, 11 rebounds, and four blocks. So uh, he's a problem. Now, Xavier Simpson, another big problem as well. I know Brad Underwood talked a little bit about him as well and just that he's such a difficult player to guard just because he is such a great passer. He talked about just the velocity at which he's passing the ball. You don't see it a lot in college basketball. How is that going to be a problem for the Illini and what are they going to need to do to shut him down? He's one of the best playmakers in the country. He's second in the country in assists. And what he does is he comes off ball screens and he has shooters all around the perimeter and he just knows to, how to make the right play. And, and he's a veteran. He's tough. He's very physical. He can absorb contact. He's also improved his own jump shot. He's shooting 43% from three himself. So uh, in transition, in the ball screen, Illinois as a team is going to have to do well defending, get out on shooters, and not let Xavier get comfortable. Uh, now, are there any maybe just holes that you see with the Michigan team? Obviously, they're ranked number five in the country, so uh, they kind of have it all put together in a sense. But where might be the opportunity for the Illini for them to shine tonight and if they do want to get the win over the Wolverines? Yeah, two areas in particular. If you guard the three-point line, this team relies a lot on the three-point shot. So if you're able to get them to miss some, as they did at Louisville, they only scored 43 points in that game, then 
maybe you can go on some runs if you really can get some hands up and, and make those shots tough, difficult for them. And also, they haven't been great on the defensive glass. A lot of teams recently in the last four games have gotten offensive rebounds, second chance opportunities. They're a good defensive team. They'll make you miss shots, but maybe you can get the second chance and, and put it in. So I think for Kofi and Georgie and some of the rebounding guards like Alan Griffin, there'll be opportunities for second chance, second chance points. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We are just about uh, 35 minutes away from tip off. So we are certainly excited to see how this one pans out and just to see how the Illini will be able to stand their ground. I mean, they've proven themselves on several occasions that they can hang uh, with some of these high major teams, just not able to get over that hump. Brett. All right, let's break it down here. What do you guys think? Does Illinois get a win tonight? It's a one point favorite, so it's a pick em game. If you got Illinois, you're going to get them to take the cover. If, if you don't, then Michigan's going to come into State Farm Center and pick up a win. Illinois has not beaten Michigan in a long time. They've been a perennial program under John Beeline. Now Juwan Howard comes in. So, Derek Marley, what do you think? Does Illinois get the win tonight? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to them. I think uh, they're kind of due for a win. Again, we talk about them just getting over that hump, getting that first statement win. I think kind of the situation is perfect. I mean, they are favored to win. It might just be by one point, but, you know, they're at home, and it seems like all of the, the pieces are kind of fitting into the puzzle. But uh, yet again, leave it to Illinois maybe to, to blow this one. They are favored uh, to win. And like you said earlier, Derek, uh, the – Every Big Ten team that has played uh, at home at, in the conference yeah. games undefeated. They're Absolutely. 8 0. So that must be where Vegas is leaning. I don't know. I, I'm still hesitant. I don't know if they can execute late game. And Michigan just has so many shooters. The only really needs this game. But if I had to pick, I'd say Michigan 72 68. All right. Well, that'll do it from us here at the State Farm Center. For Derek, I'm Marley. Brett, we'll send it back to you. Okay. Thank you. So Marley picks. Illinois, Derek picks Michigan 72-68. We'll see how it plays out tonight. We'll have all the highlights coming up on WCIA 3 at 10. We will also stream Brad Underwood's post-game press conference after the game. Watch for that right here on the same digital channels you're on right now, the WCIA 3 mobile app, the WCIA 3 Facebook page, as well as WCIA.com. Should be a fun atmosphere tonight out at State Farm Center. Hopefully a good crowd as 8-1 Michigan, fifth-ranked team in the country, visit Champaign and Illinois 6-3, and three, still looking for that first win over a high major opponent this, week, this season, also trying to avoid dropping its third straight game. For Derek and Marley, I'm Brett saying good night. Make sure to check out Alana Inquirer as well for all of their post-game coverage. We'll see you after the game. Enjoy.